heartfelt welcome to all of our new members, to our lifelong members, and to everyone in between. Welcome, Jews by birth, Jews by choice, and to all non-Jewish partners and family members, welcome and thank you. Welcome LGBTQ members and others marginalized in the past. Each and every one of you belong here. At this moment, in these challenging times, we are together in simcha, joy, gladness, in self-reflection, and in community. In this, my third year as president, it remains a privilege to serve you. Two years ago, while this con uh, congregation was still battling the scourge of COVID, I expressed appreciation to a relatively small in-house audience, perhaps 100 intrepid souls, at the prospect of our congregation's survival. In the face of what seemed an interminable building closure and the painful loss of personal contact with one another, we were, we were resilient. Last year, I chose the portmanteau term, Sir Thrival, a favorite of mine, to celebrate a 20% rise in our congregational membership, growing revenues, and the regular return of in-person religious services, educational, cultural, and joyful social events. This evening's term comes from the heart, gratitude. OZ's rebound continues with membership almost 50% higher than our COVID nadir. But there's something more, something palpable, something real. It is a spirit embodied in our smiles as we enter this building and greet one another. We are truly grateful that we can be together. We are practicing what Ron Wolfson references in his book, Relational Judaism is, quote, the value of face-to-face -face community, of relationships that give life meaning and purpose, belonging and blessing. Each of us tonight knows why we're here. Everywhere in our home on a daily basis, I witness people smiling, chatting, introducing themselves to one another. It is a validation of what my parents taught me in seeing that the glass is half full rather than half empty. It is the spirit of determination, of striving to uplift, to validate, to encourage one another as its foundation in our unique cultural and religious belief that our Jewish identity is grounded in the hard work of doing, of making the most of each and every opportunity such that when we are done, our lives serve as a blessing, a model for others to follow, to emulate, to achieve goodness. What we are feeling and experiencing life is neither random nor accidental. What it reflects is our collective relief, our confidence that when we walk into this building, we are safe, we are nurtured, we belong, and we are home. For me, the spirit of gratitude extends to all those who bring life to this space. Our community is blessed with the presence of a dedicated and extraordinarily talented staff. They belong. And we are likewise blessed by an unprecedented number of volunteers who embody the spirit of selflessness and who dedicate an amazing amount of time and energy contributing to deepening and sustaining our community. Both our staff and our volunteers are aligned with our Imagine 2025 soon to be our reimagined 3035 blueprint, our strategic plan that grounds this modern Jewish community on three pillars, religious, spiritual practice, cultural identity, and social action. These offer options and pathways through which all of us can find and feed our Jewish souls, nurture and sustain our Jewish identities, our values, our hopes. I begin with the greatest of all gratitude to acknowledge our senior staff. Thank you to our new and energetic clergy team, Rabbi Aaron Filmus and Cantor Jessica Silverberg. The religious and spiritual life of this congregation is flourishing as evidenced tonight. It is evidenced in well attended Shabbos and, uh, and holiday services and weekly Friday Shabbos parties with our preschool children which I encourage you at some point to visit, filled with music and dance. It is 
present in our Jewish Journey Sunday Morning Junior Congregation, and it is an ongoing collaborative outreach with other congregations. Thank you, Rabbi Aaron Cantor Jessica. To Brett, wherever you are, Smith, now our official executive director, for having a little more than in a year's time fixed almost everything <laughs> that was broken during our COVID world and our COVID woes. And for being the soft-spoken and ever reassuring presence for all of our diverse enterprises, for our staff, and for each and every one of us. To Naomi Burrell, our Director of Youth Education, whose vision for a new Jewish Journeys program, a welcome replacement to our dreaded and mislabeled Hebrew school, <laughs> has almost doubled our numbers and led to innovative and meaningful ways through which our students joyfully embrace their Jewish identities. And for creating a teen Nadav program where our post-bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah teens remain connected with friends while making meaningful contributions in our kitchen, in our preschool, and throughout this building. To Ali Skoog, our new preschool director, who in the face of ongoing financial and staffing challenges that plague all Vermont preschools, continues to uphold Full Circle's preschool dedication to providing safety, joy, and exemplary learning opportunities that nurture our children's growth. And to Dana Sachs, who directs our Shook, our meeting place of peace that fosters equity and self-worth while gifting new Americans and others in need with high quality clothing, housewares, and other essential goods. And last but hardly not least, wherever he is, the one and only Raul Guevara, yeah. our facilities manager for more than 40 years. Many of you know that Raul had planned to retire this December focuses his attention on his family and grandchildren. But in the face of our ongoing needs, he has graciously agreed to temporary, temporarily stay on. His loyalty and his beloved place in this community is unparalleled. As one person described it to me, after, uh, after creating Raul, the Almighty broke the mold. <laughs> Once again, we the OZ congregation, all of us are recipients of his caring presence. Beyond our staff, it takes a veritable village of volunteers to sustain the richness and vitality of Jewish life in our home. I apologize I cannot acknowledge each of you by name, but I can briefly share some illustrations of the diverse and exemplary ways in which our OZ volunteers through formal committees, task forces, and individual initiatives nurture the life of our hearts and our minds. Supporting our religious and spiritual leaders, our lay leaders who lane, they chant Torah on Shabbos, they, diverse, uh, they organize diverse uh, facets of our services, they lead meditations, they facilitate Vermont's only daily minion, allowing Oziers and others the opportunity to say Kaddish and remember the blessed memory of loved ones. And supporting them is our fabulous Kiddush crew numbering more than two dozen whose delectable Shabbos luncheons are a weekly draw for growing numbers of young and old congregants alike to connect and to find joy. And so too, the Kiddush Committee's bereavement meals offer out-of-town friends and family a quiet and respectful place to be together. In that same vein, we have a vibrant cemetery committee whose dedication in maintaining, repairing, and most recently in cleaning gravestones upholds our dedication to preserving loving memory. Consider, too, the richness of cultural programming under the aegis of our Center for Jewish Life. There's our adult education group sponsoring talks, book discussions, memoir writing, memoir writing, writing it's easy for me to say, and more, and our newly created fun committee sponsoring everything from wine tasting, games, meals, Stay tuned, there's much forthcoming. We have musical concerts, regularly, regular showings of our renowned two little Jerusalem treasures, our lost mural and our newly installed copper ark in the small sanctuary. We have a vibrant 20s, 30s group, and of course, we have the queen of Mahjong and her entourage every Wednesday. And we uphold the name that our founders bestowed upon us, Ohavi Zedek, lovers of justice. Beyond our shook, our inclusion committee strives to make Ozea a more welcoming space for all. 
A new Kalanu initiative spearheads the congregation's commitment to combat growing anti-Semitism in Chittenden County and beyond. And our Gamach initiative has produced and distributed hundreds of nutritious meals, all natural, all wonderful over the last nine months to OZ families and others in need. There are many others too who are less visible but no less important in the life of OZ, working in our house committee to maintain our properties, ensure security in these difficult times. There is our house uh, human resources, our membership, our finance committees, and my collaborators on the executive committee and on our board. To each and every volunteer, thank you. Thank you on behalf of this congregation. And for others not yet involved, consider the opportunity to make new friends, deepen your sense of Jewish identity, make a difference in this community. Visit our website, contact Brett, write to me. We will find what, any way we can to honor your volunteer requests. I'd like for a moment, though, to shift to a focus on our future. On Yom Kippur, we challenge ourselves both as individuals and as community to correct past errors in judgment and flaws in actions and to strive to do better in the coming year. As I contemplate the future life of this congregation, I am struck by the momentousness of this moment. I believe it is historic. Now more than ever, we understand our vulnerabilities within a larger, sometimes hostile, sometimes indifferent community. And in the spirit of gratitude, we comprehend the depth of what it means to be in this home, together, in Jewish community, across generations and across diverse interests. The historian in me, sorry, would argue that in our congregation's 140 year past, there have been two pivotal, two conscious moments, moments of vision, moments of courage, during which leaders imagined themselves building a community that would last for generations. We were founded in 1885 by persecuted Lithuanian emigres who sought to uphold their orthodox ways by recreating their Eastern European shtetl village in Burlington's Old North End. For those peddlers who dreamed that they and their children and their grandchildren could live a better life, their little Jerusalem village offered a secure home for three generations together with bright opportunities for economic advancement and better lives. But that shtetl no longer suited the needs of a youthful generation in the aftermath of World War II. Their, their world had changed, and many envisaged a more modern Ohavi Zedek, one no longer rooted in traditional and old world orthodox ways. In 1947, they invited a youthful World War II chaplain, Max Wall, to come to Burlington, a rabbi from the conservative movement they neglected to tell him, mind you, until the ride from the downtown train station to the synagogue on Archibald Street, that theirs was not a conservative but an orthodox synagogue. <laughs> and yes, by the way, his sermon was to be delivered on Shabbos in Yiddish. <laughs> on the ride back to the train station on Sunday, Rabbi Wall was telling us the story before he passed. He said he made it clear that he had no interest whatsoever in coming here. But in the end, with significant prodding from leaders of the conservative movement, he agreed to come with the understanding that his OZ would be recast in a modern mold. This building was his crowning glory, built on property whose protective covenant specified, quote, no Jews or blacks allowed, unquote. With the full support of his congregation, Rabbi Wall created a large Jewish community center in the true modernist style. Then our avant-garde in the 1950s modernist uh, uh, architecture. It boasted a magnificent front entry that opened to, to a large and elegant marble lobby that offered direct access to our new egalitarian sanctuary where men and women could sit together and pray as equals. In addition, immediate access to our staff and rabbi's offices, all very orderly. A second modest side entrance in the back offered pickup and delivery to then our 
daily used Hebrew school classrooms, a small library, men and women's locker rooms, and the social hall many of you are sitting in, which originally served as a full court basketball uh, court. Our court, incidentally, the envy of every other kid in the church league in Burlington. <laughs> Didn't help us win games, mind you, but <laughs> with new uh, with new Jewish families, including my own parents who came in 1951, pouring into the city to work at uh, uh, UVM and IBM and other burgeoning uh, businesses, a new OZ was born, an open and welcoming congregation. That spirit of acceptance became the cornerstone of Rabbi Joshua Chasen's subsequent quarter century rabbinate, and it continues to define who we are to this very day. Tonight, I submit to you that we are no longer in a home that meets our current, let alone our future needs. So too, our current endowments, though growing, do not generate sufficient income to meet soaring staff and programming uh, costs. I submit to you it is our turn, it is our time to exercise courage and commitment to build our endowments and to ensure our financial stability. It is time to reimagine, too, our home one in which we take pride, one in which our imagined vision is fully realized. In the weeks and months to come, you will be hearing about a major capital campaign that will be, we will be undertaking to secure this congregation's long-term future as a vibrant, meaningful, purposeful, and blessed Jewish community center. At its hearts are facilities that will allow us to fully live our most heartfelt Jewish values and our desire to be together. Most notably, in 1952, most congregant families had one single wage earner. Today, with both parents working, childcare is essential. At a time of great need and vulnerability, many children suffer. Our modern Jewish community center must bear responsibility for helping us, helping our own and others, fostering security, confidence, and personal growth. And it must do so in modern and not makeshift facilities. We can and will expand to meet the full needs of all of our young families by building an addition of five to seven modern classrooms, each incidentally with its own bathroom, not insignificant and warm and welcoming spaces. Education, as always, is integral to our Jewish values. Beyond that, we will have a new entrance in what now is the rear here on the side of the building with an open courtyard for seasonal gatherings, greater up parking options, modern office facilities, multi-purpose social hall with glass separations, a coffee lounge, classrooms with modern technology to facilitate online learning and connection with peoples across the globe, and a fully developed historical wing highlighting our lost mural in our copper arc with interpretive facilities that allow us proudly to share our community's historic presence and experience and significance. As we reflect on the challenges that confront us in this community, in this nation, in this world, we can, indeed, we must, cast aside any doubts we have about our capacity to sustain in perpetuity a model Jewish community center here in Burlington, Vermont. Our forebearers planted a little Jerusalem. They funded our endowments. They gifted us this building. And they secured a home for us and welcomed us. As it is such, it is incumbent now upon us to lovingly dedicate ourselves to making a new welcoming home for others to nurture and navigate their personal Jewish journeys. Now is our time, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. Lashana Tova, you will be hearing more on the Capitol campaign in coming weeks and months. May each of you and maybe all together be inscribed in the Book of Life. Thank you.